This week is pizza week, and because I can't find a Chicago deep dish style pizzeria here in the Netherlands, I'm going to show you all how to make one. I don't know why there's no Chicago style pizzerias here in the Netherlands, but I do know one thing. People do enjoy Chicago deep dish pizza, and my partner's favorite pizzeria in America is Lou Manati's and they have this really great buttery pizza crust that is not made with any butter. It tastes really really delicious. I spent hours researching how to make this crust and I spent m multiple attempts trying to figure out how to make it just right and I've come pretty close. So. I'm going to teach you all how to do that so you can have your own Chicago deep dish Lou Malnati's pizza here in the Netherlands. So what you will need to do this is just a couple of easy ingredients and just a single bowl. Well, at least to make the dough that is. The ingredients that you'll need for this recipe are all-purpose flour, water, Sunflower oil, or if you can find it, corn oil. I find that both of them give about the same flavor. Corn oil is preferred, but I find that I can't find corn oil easily, so sunflower oil it is. And active dry yeast. And to coat the bowl, you need some olive oil. Take out your bowl, and I'm gonna put it on my handy dandy scale. So, bowl on, scale on, and because I am using instant dry yeast instead of active dry yeast, I'm not going to have the yeast sit in the warm water first. So, I have my bowl on, I have my kitchen scale on, and I'm going to put in 250 grams of flour. Okay, perfect. So I have my 250 grams of flour. Now I'm gonna sprinkle in two grams of instant dry yeast. Alrighty, there we go. And then after that, I'm going to put in my warm water. I did not boil this. I checked the temperature to make sure it was at 110, and it is, so now I'm gonna put it in to the bowl, and I only need 113 grams of water. Be very slow if you're doing this all in one bowl. Okay. And then I will put in the sunflower oil or corn oil if that's what you have. And I only need 48 grams. And again, very slowly if you are doing it all in one bowl. I am sure if there's anybody who is a professional chef watching this, they will say don't follow any of her directions. But, uh... Yeah, I don't know. That's that's how I do it and it turns out well. So, I'm not a professional, nor do I use professional techniques. Uh, and you need a spoon to mix, unless you want to use your hands. But you just need to mix the dough until it comes together. You don't want to knead it because you want the dough to be very soft. So you don't want to develop any of the gluten in the flour. By the way, this crust makes one eight inch round deep dish pizza. I only need to make one deep dish pizza. So I like to have a single recipe. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure that the dough that all the flour gets into the dough. See, nice little tiny dough ball right here. Okay, so then I'm gonna put some olive oil in this bowl. And swirl it around. And put, make sure that the dough is also covered in the olive oil. Okay, it's all good. And then I'm going to put plastic over it. I need to go get my plastic because I forgot to bring it over. I'm going to cover it in plastic. It's 
covered, and then I'm going to take a clean hand towel, which I also need to go get. And now I'm going to take this bowl and put it in my spare room where I have turned on the heater so that it is a nice warm place for this dough to rise. Now I am going to do a warm rise followed by a cold rise. What that means is I'm going to have this rise for about eight hours and then I'm going to throw it in the fridge for another about 12 or so hours up to 48 hours so you can have it in the fridge for quite a while and then I'll take it out and make a deep dish pizza with it. So after all of that stuff is done I will be back to show you how to assemble and bake it. I can start assembling the pizza. So I have my deep dish pan here. It's eight inches. I have my oil. So I'm just going to put the oil in the pan to make sure that the pizza doesn't stick. Then after you let the dough sit out for an hour, you can put it in the pan. So you just want to use the tips of your fingers to push it to the edges, like so. Huh, my oven is preheated, sorry, that's what keeps beeping. Just going to make sure it doesn't turn off. Make sure that you really push the dough into the little corner of the pan. I know it's round, but there's that edge that comes together. You gotta make sure it really gets in there. And then push the dough up the edges. Now you're gonna have some extra dough, just a little bit. Go ahead and just tear that off. And my countertop is clean, which is why I'm just putting the extra dough on the countertop. I don't care if my pizzas look pretty, I just care if they taste good, so. I like to go around just one more time, make sure it's all nice and thin. You don't want it too thick because you want the crust to get crispy. Okay, so voila. Look at it, it looks so nice. Then a Chicago style pizza, the cheese goes on the bottom. Make sure that you have mozzarella low moisture cheese. You can get this at Dirk. If you want though, I suggest going to a specialty cheese store and getting slices of mozzarella. It's better than the shredded stuff, but I'm making this on the fly, so I just picked up what was at the grocery store real quick. And go ahead and cover the bottom with cheese. Okay, I'm using a whole bag. Okay, and then after the cheese, I like to put the veggies on. So my partner likes mushrooms, so I'm going to put the mushrooms on. And he also likes spinach. So, a little handful of spinach goes on next. And then he's not a vegetarian like I am. So, on goes some sausage. Make sure to get flavored sausage, not just plain sausage because that's not going to enhance the flavor of the pizza at all. It's going to be quite boring. I always just squeeze the meat out of the, the casing and put it on top. Okay, that looks good. Now that I've handled meat, I need to wash my hands. Okay, now that I've washed my hands, I'm going to put on the sauce. Real quick before I do that though, what I did to make the sauce is buy this little can of tomato paste 
and this chunky can and I used all of this one <laughs> and then I just used enough of this to make the sauce thinner and then once it's you know a little bit thin then I put in maybe a, t a teaspoon of sugar it wasn't much just so that it wouldn't be so tart and then that seemed to have made a nice sauce that is kind of similar to the sauce on Lou's pizza if you really want to get a good tasting sauce that tastes like Lou's you need to buy a can of six in one but you can only get that in America and Amazon doesn't ship it here to the Netherlands so you're gonna have to either make some connections in America to bring you them or when you're there order them I don't know what to tell you okay well now the sauce goes on the top gonna put all of the sauce on looks like I made just the right amount and you just smooth it out on the top well now that that's all done into the oven it goes now my oven is a convection oven so it tends to cook the pizza very quickly so I usually put it in for about 25 minutes and then I check on it to see if it needs any more time. However, if you have a standard oven, it'll probably take about 45 minutes to bake. So we'll check on it in about 25 minutes and see what's up. This one's done too. Okay, so those are my pizzas. I am not eating these because I'm preparing for a bodybuilding competition. So that's why I made these for my partner, the way he likes it, not the way I like it. So he's going to enjoy them. And I hope you make one and enjoy it as well. If you have any questions about this tutorial, please comment down below and I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. And if you enjoy videos like this, please give it a thumbs up so I know to create more. And I hope to see you with my next video. So excited to make this video. I didn't prepare all of my ingredients, so I'll have to come.